Welcome back to Book Break. If you have clicked on this video, I'm assuming you are a big fan of the show Stranger Things. And so you will already know and be very excited about the fact that at the time this video goes live, we are just one day away from Stranger Things season four dropping on Netflix. So to get in the mood, I have compiled a list of 13 books for fans of Stranger Things. So the vibe check here for Stranger Things-esque books is 80s, nostalgic, mysterious, supernatural, sci-fi, horror, investigative drama. We're talking Stephen King, Steven Spielberg, H.P. Lovecraft-esque, also anime and retro video games vibes. So that is a very hard brief, but here is what I've pulled together. Starting with The Body by Stephen King, which is the novella that the movie Stand By Me was based on. So loads of 80s nostalgia here, even though the book and movie are actually set earlier in time, they were a big thing in the 80s. And it's also got Stranger Things vibes in that it's about a group of friends, a group of kids who come across something really dark. So in this book, there is a young boy who has gone missing and it turns out he was hit by a train. So this young group of friends set out to try and find his body on the railroad tracks. So pretty dark material there. And the book is narrated by one of the main characters, Gordy, looking back on these events from adulthood. For something spookier, I recommend Leech by Hiron Ennis, which is gothic science fiction horror, and it's really, really weird. So in this one, the main character and the narrator is a parasite who has taken over several different human hosts over the centuries. So that is horrifying enough to start with, and the book just keeps getting spookier and stranger and wonderfully weird. Stranger Things is pretty HP Lovecraft inspired, so the third book I'm going to recommend is Lovecraft Country by Matt Ruff. This is a dark fantasy horror retelling that uses Lovecraftian creatures, but in a clever twist makes racism the scariest villain of all in the book. Because, of course, Lovecraft himself, the writer, is pretty much equally famous for his own terrible racism as for his horror writing. And so Matt Ruff explores the conjunction between these two in a really clever way. Also, it's just brilliant sci-fi. The Ballad of Black Tom by Victor Laval is another Lovecraft-inspired one. Victor Laval is a mixed-race author who grew up loving H.P. Lovecraft and then found out about the author's own unsavoury beliefs. So of course he ended up with a very complicated relationship to Lovecraft's works that he had found so inspiring for his own writing. This novella is a retelling of one of Lovecraft's stories, The Horror at Red Hook. And in this book, it is set in an alternate Brooklyn where things that ought to have been left sleeping have been awakened. If you like the upside down alternate dimension part of Stranger Things, then you will love Dark Matter by Blake Crouch, which is a sci-fi novel about parallel universes. So in this book, Jason, our main character, is knocked out, kidnapped, and wakes up to find a completely different life than the one he remembers. His wife is not his wife, his son is not his son. It seems that he dreamed up his entire life. And in the process of trying to find his way back to the life that he remembers and the family he loves, he uncovers a truth even more terrifying and mind-boggling than he ever could have imagined. So this book will hurt your brain in the best way. A Skinful of Shadows by Frances Harding has a main character a bit like Eleven. She's a girl called Make Peace, a very courageous girl with a mysterious past, but also with a ghost inside her. She has been possessed by a spirit, and not a human one. But as well as being a story about a possession, a story about a haunting, the book is also a dark historical fantasy set during the English Civil War with plenty of mystery and intrigue and spies. For that unique blend of horror and emotion that you get from Stranger Things, I would recommend Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield, which is a beautifully strange novel. It's about a married couple, Leah and Miri, and it's told before and after a deep sea diving mission that Leah went on that went mysteriously wrong. We don't know what happened, but Leah has come back not the same. So we flash back and forth between hearing Leah's perspective as she goes down on this mission and things start to get terrifying, and then we also hear Miri's perspective in the aftermath of this trying to deal with what has happened to her wife, and it is this otherworldly change that has happened. 
it's really really beautiful it's very melancholy and i think you'll love it then if you like the coming of age part of stranger things but set within the midst of all of this dark magical happenings then i would recommend white is for witching by helen oyeyemi Helen Oyeyemi is a very interesting and strange writer. I recently did a video on this channel all about her whole backlist, so I will link to that below so you can go check it out. White is for Witching is a story about a haunted house and it is partly narrated by the haunted house. This house becomes completely possessive of particularly its female occupants and does not want to let them leave. Akira by Katsuhiro Otomo is a sci-fi manga about a group of teenage friends whose lives change forever when one of them develops paranormal abilities. The story is set in the future after there has been World War III, which was triggered by a mysterious, seemingly supernatural event. So when one of the characters, Tetsuo, develops these powers, he finds himself the target of a shadowy agency determined to put a stop to it. And the agency's every move is motivated by an all-consuming fear of a supernatural power known only as Akira. Then of course I have to recommend My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. Grady Hendrix is already a bit of a booktube favourite and this one has such strong Stranger Things vibes. It's about two teenage best friends, Abby and Gretchen, who have just started high school when Gretchen starts to act a little strange. Abby soon realises there is only one explanation for what is happening to Gretchen. She has a demon inside her. And Abby is the only one who can help her. And you can see from the cover quite how much retro 80s nostalgia there is in this book. Ready Player One by Ernest Cline is set in the future in 2044, but it is packed full of 80s references. So teenager Wade is obsessed with this virtual reality world called the Oasis, where there are all these different puzzles set by creators for him to solve, and Wade has just found his first clue in a puzzle devoted to 80s pop culture references. Luckily, Wade knows a lot about the 80s, and so he is ready to solve these clues but these puzzles can get seriously competitive. There are people who would kill to win, literally. Another show that Stranger Things fans tend to love is Twin Peaks, so I think you might enjoy the book series by Mark Frost, The Secret History of Twin Peaks and Twin Peaks The Final Dossier. Both of these novels dive further into the mysteries from the show, further into the backstories of the characters and just really expand this world amazingly. And finally, for some non-fiction about some real-life stranger things that have happened, I recommend The Men Who Stare at Goats by John Watson. In the late 70s and early 80s, a unit of the US military started experimenting with the paranormal. They were called the First Earth Battalion and they were entrusted with developing invisibility, psychic powers and even the ability to kill goats just by staring at them. And they really weren't joking. So if you love the conspiracy theories of Stranger Things and the weird intersection of government with the paranormal, then you will love reading about this truly bizarre part of history. Let me know in the comments below how excited you are for Stranger Things Season 4 and if you've read any other books that you think will be perfect for fans of the show. And a lot of the books that I've just talked about are perfect for 80s kids, so I will link here to a video I made before on books for 90s kids, so do click through and have a watch and I'll see you next time.